Am I correct in saying that Richard and, and Les as well weren't there for the past couple of albums? Richard, Richard uh, has been, but Les, this is Les's first recording with us, and it's also Dover Weinberg, our keyboard player's first recording with us as well. Uh, with this, uh, well, it's not as significant uh, a line of change as I thought, but then with, the, with this change, was, did it influence the music uh, in any sense? Yeah, it did. It did. And because Dover is playing keyboards, um, his influence is, is big. He's, he's, a, he's a different keyboard player than Jim Pugh, who was with us before. And Dover's an old friend. He was back in. He was in the band in the '70s, in the late '70s. So he's he's returned. Les has never recorded with us before. My idea for this for the for this record, and because we had made the personnel change, was to have Steve Jordan come in, because I've worked with him before, and I know he's a great organizer. So, and then that Steve had mentioned to me, he says, when you guys rehearse, don't over rehearse. And Steve comes in. Pulls us all into the same room, and he says, "Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's run this one down." So we'll, like, say for example, "Hip Tight Onions." We started playing it, and we ran it consistently for like, you know, 10, 12 minutes, and we're playing it. And he's changing the tempo for us. Okay, let's bring it a little, a little bit like this, and then, you know, and he's dancing to it and everything like that, directing us, and then he'll go, "Stop! Okay, stop! Let's cut it." He points to the engineer, and when we just left off from, you know, we start up from where we left off with the, the thing. And so he's, he brings everybody into it, you know, and, and I thought, that's a, the perfect guy to, to bring this band together. And, and we work like that for the, you know, the two weeks that we recorded. Was it important for the sound to record it uh, in the way you just described with everybody just playing instead of uh, recording the, the instruments and vocals separately? We, the Cray Band is always okay. recorded together, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know people do that, but that, I mean, we've never done that. It, 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 so it's, it, it's, I assume then it's important to get that groove or, or that, that sound of playing together. It is. It to is. capture that. To capture that spirit and the fun and whatever, you know, the mood. And uh, that's, that's one of the great things about Steve Jordan's production, too. And, well, you work with him, uh, was it over 10 years ago? Yeah, I think the, the, the first record we did together was an, uh, an album called Take Your Shoes Off, and that was released, I think, in 1999. So when you uh, uh, revisited him, and what was his uh, reply, basically, well, when, when you suggested to...? No, he, he, he was, he was gung-ho. <laughs> And, and was it the same as it was, or did you learn new things from each other? I've learned years? new things because it had been so long, you know. And, uh, you know, I knew, because I remembered from how he produced us in the past. And uh, I looked forward to it. And, I, and it was also Richard Cousins, is our bass player, his first opportunity to record with Steve. So uh, Richard wasn't in the band when we recorded the two records we did in the past. So it was like... It was great because, like, he brought everybody together, and, and um, I, you know, I just kind of, I just, you know, played my part. I, I watched Steve organize everything, and and just, you know, came, you know, just did what I was supposed to do and listened to Steve and watched the whole magic happen. Because you, uh, was this uh, easier or freeing to do? Because you've produced records yourself as well. It's very freeing. I was going to mention that that I had done some production in the past, but. Yeah, it's very freeing to have somebody else take charge, and especially somebody that you dig, you know, somebody who you have a lot of respect for, and um, yeah, so it's really cool. Okay, I, I want to go back to the to the songs uh, for a second. Uh, about half are our cover songs. Mm -hmm. When you when you sing these songs, and obviously these are often songs that have to do with relationships, heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you haven't written them yourself, how do you convey the emotionality or the emotion of a song and do it justice? It's yeah, well, I think the thing is, is to 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 uh, to get the mood, you know, to get in the mood. I think you know, for is and and what comes to my mind right now is the Bobby Blue Bland song, "Deep in My Soul," 
and that I, I, I've known that song for the longest time, and I picked that song out, and, and particularly because I wanted to pay tribute to Bobby, who we lost last year. And um, I, I had a couple of opportunities to meet Bobby Blue Bland, and, and uh, I've always had the highest respect for him. I'm hearing his music when I was a little kid in Germany, you know, going back then, my mom would play those records. So there's a, there's, a, there's a frame of mind and there's a spirit and there's a, a, a place you have to put yourself into and you have to be in the moment, you know, and you have to, you have to go there with the tune. Most of the time it works out, not always, you know, but it, that's what you try to do. You try to put yourself in, this, in, in somebody else's shoes to, to do a cover song. But do you then need points of reference from your own life where you can relate to something where you go you, 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 you can do that. I don't know if you can always call it up. I wouldn't, you know, pretend to, uh, to say I can always summon up some spirit so I can get into that mood because you can't always call it like that. But just to drop everything else that's around you at the moment and just plant your feet and, and you know, do it. And, the, and then the songs that you write yourself, are, are they autobiographical? Some can be. I, I won't say everything. Because I do write songs in the spirit of the, you know, of the, of the, of the genre or other genres. And uh, then more recently, there's there's things that are political that you know that, that I I've written about and want to talk about you know. But yeah, I, w I wanted to ask you about those songs because uh, on the record there's there's one and if you have them these socially con uh, conscious mm -hmm. uh, songs before in, in for instance twenty. Mm -hmm. um, on this record, it's uh, what would you say? What would you say? Yeah. And how do these songs come to you? And and do you really have a do you make it an issue to, to, to have something to say as well, instead of, um, well, that thing's not right. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying, yeah. if, if you, that you put a, some weight to it, that this is something you feel uh, for and that you want to express. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say that I didn't do anything on the last album, but I did, which was a song called Great Big Old House. And, and, you know, I've, I've been doing that more recently because it's, these are things that, you know, while we're out here on the road, we have time to read the newspaper, see what's, you know, what the latest news is and all that stuff like that. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's those things that, you know, we're made aware of. And as we get older, we pay more attention to what's going on in the world around us, you know. And so... Um, I mean, 20 years ago, I, I wouldn't have been talking about these kind of things, but it, it's, it feels important to me now to do so. And, um, and so I do, and I do it because I want to, and then I also do it mainly because I know people don't have the time to pick up the newspaper and stuff like that, so when they have some downtime and they get to listen to a record, and it's no matter who it is, if it's one of ours, you're gonna get you're gonna get a little bit of news of what's mm -hmm. what's going on and and to to be made aware of you know what's going on. And um, for instance, with the song Twenty, do you then also get a lot of reactions about the uh, about yeah. the song and even yeah. even a sense of a backlash maybe? Yeah, there's there's been some backlash, but there's also been a bunch of uh, positive feedback from it. I I put that song together because. I remember my father telling me, because he was in the army, and he said, you know, you get orders when you're in the army, and you never question them. That's not your responsibility to question the orders, you just do as you're told. And, uh, and so, thinking that, and with what was going on, and the good intentions of a lot of young people to join the military after the situation that happened at, in, in New York and, and in D.C., thinking they're going to go and, you know, resolve the issue and then to find out that they're over there, you know, doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. That was me giving a voice to those soldiers and, and uh, so they could, you know, you know, have to, you know, say something. So I heard a lot from mothers who lost family mm -hmm. and to soldiers 
and, 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 and Marines and people coming up to me and saying thank you for writing that song. So, Just, just as you said, just uh, because the news won't necessarily uh, put it in the yeah. words you would put it. Right. Yeah. Um, well, finally, um, you've played with, with John Lee Hooker, Keith Richards, uh, Albert Collins, mm -hmm. uh, all those people. Do you still have a goal for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well, in the, in the sense that do you, that you have something to prove, or, or is it just you want to make good music? I want to make good music, and that's my goal. I want to continue making music. I want to make good music, and I want to continue playing. Because, you know, when, when we started, I mean, we wanted to, we just wanted to get the gigs. and. You know, you know, we had the great success with you know Strong Persuader, which gave us, you know, a calling card to go to a lot of different places to play. So, you know, that that was really big for us, and uh, we want to continue to be able to play the music that we want to whoever will come to listen to it. So, that's that's the goal. We want to continue doing this. Okay, thank you very much for your Thank time. you, Robin. Thanks.